Namaskar. Every human is a very unique personality. Every human is a creation of God, as we say. Every human has his own body, his own mind. But then yogis have observed that human mind is such a mind, which is a highly trained mind, highly uh, developed mind, human mind, which in yoga, they say, is chitta. In English, we use the word mind. This chitta is very soft, very palpable. It can get affected very easily. It can get molded very easily. You can train your chitta in such a way that you can definitely have a reflection of consciousness within. It looks like consciousness. To that extent, chitta could be molded. And other way around, if chitta is not trained properly, chitta can go to the worst state. It can get affected by anything and everything. So this type of a chitta every human has. And so you will say that this chitta has to be managed very well. Otherwise, it can take you to the worst state if not trained well. So now yogis have divided this varieties of chittas. Every human is variety, no doubt. But then if we have to put them in a groups, so there are five types of variety, five grouping is being made. And the first grouping, the name is given is Moodha Chitta. Chitta, which is Moodha, dull, lethargic, toxic. It is there, but it is like not there. Somebody has to tell you, do this and you will do it. It is like a cow which has been led. Or uh, um, sheep, one sheep is going, another starts behind, third starts behind. Doesn't think that sheep is going to the butcher house. No, chitta is there but not used. It is dull. This dull type of chitta is maximum. It is maximally seen because it can get affected by anything and everything. Things are bad, you are unhappy. Things are uncertain, you are anxious. Things are happy, good, you are happy. So it is something like that. Your mind is totally dependent on the external factor. But this mind, which is not thinking, it is dull. It gets affected by different, different situations. Somebody behaved rudely, you are hurt. Now this mind. You are hurt. Who is suffering? You. His rude behavior is his problem. But you get hurt and so you suffer. That is the whole problem. Again, situations when they are very tough, person, it's all natural tendencies are also lost. Person loses his sleep, person loses his hunger, person loses his thirst, person loses his normal behavior, always restless, sad, unhappy. So now this type of a chitta, dull chitta, what is to be done? This chitta is not good at all because it is continuously hurting his body, hurting himself. His immunity is going to go lonely, can't go high. He will get affected by anything. So we have to be very, very clear what type of chitta I have? Somebody behaved rudely. Am I getting hurt? If I am getting hurt, then my chitta is not right. It is dull. I should not get hurt. I should train my mind. So this training period is most important. Uh, Shankara Tani says, Well, bhaja govindam, bhaja govindam, govindam bhaja bhate. Mati is mudha. What you are supposed to do is bhaja govinda. That is the formula they have given for this type of a mind. Means, come on, you can't think what is right, what is wrong. You don't have a discrimination. You don't have intelligence so much. You have, but you have not, never used. And so on, so forth. So what should you do? At least repeat the name of God. This is how it is being directed. Repeating name of God means believing in God. Understanding that everything is happening because of God. 
and so you don't have to suffer or get worried. But that also people can't do. They say they believe in God, but really they don't believe in God because if they really believe in God, they would never worry, never get tense, never get upset, never complain, never get hurt, but they do. So this mind, which is dull mind, mood of mind, needs good amount of training. So how do we go about with this type of a mind? Yoga gives a formula very clearly. It says, stop this mind. Don't use it. You don't know how to use, don't use it. You don't know how to run the machine, don't start. It's going to create problem. So don't use the mind, don't think. Otherwise, you know how to think. But stop the mind. So listen to some nice thing. So here the guidance is what Gandhi said. Let me not see something which is bad. Let me not hear something which is bad. Let me not speak something which is bad. All our sensory organs, they are showing you the external world and making you get affected because of external world. Don't see those things. They saw television is running. The screen is showing different, different pictures and you are getting affected by all different things. And the heroine is uh, being tortured and you cry here and the hero is being done something and you get affected. You suffer with that, that picture. That is Mura Chitta. You don't even remember that that is a film, somebody's imagination and you are doing it. But no, you forget that. You suffer with outside world and that is Mura Chitta. Moodness never works. Because you have mind. So now, we are supposed to stop this mind if it is getting affected or go to the next step. <coughs> which is called as Kshipta Chitra. Kshipta Chitra means you are thinking. You are thinking. You have stopped thinking. You have not stopped thinking, but you are thinking. You have heard the sound of a bird and you are thinking, this is bird. Now this is good or bad. Now, fine. The sound is good or bad. Somebody's behavior is good. You start thinking, this is not right. He should have been behaving like this and not like that. So your thinking starts. Machine has started. But still you don't know how to run the machine in a smooth way. So what you are doing? Thinking all the time, jumping from one thought to another thought, like a monkey jumping from one branch to another branch. Purpose? No, you are just jumping. One thought, another thought, third thought. It goes on in your mind. Mind is clustered with lots and lots of thoughts. Shifter. So this mind. <clears throat> so more mind goes to shift the mind, the moment mind starts working. Mood of mind happens when person overdoes things in life. Person becomes dull. You must have noticed when you become dull, when you overeat, or when you sleep too much, or when you sleep less, when you have very strong emotion which is totally blocking your mind. Strong attachment. <coughs> Strong hatred. Mind becomes dull. Because you are just shocked. <coughs> <coughs> so what you are supposed to do? <clears throat> think. Think. But think correctly. So this type of a mind which is full of thoughts all the time needs training again. Sit quietly like a child. You give a toy for one half a minute and then child is satisfied with that toy. And then something else is required. <coughs> what do we do with a child? We, child goes to school in the first and listen. Teacher is talking. You listen. <coughs> child is crying. <coughs> but we, we do ask. So we tell, come on, stand with both legs. 
parallel to each other. So here you are telling your mind to do something. That dull mind is becoming little thinking type of mind. And in thinking also, you are trying to stabilize the mind. I mean, techniques are there to help. The, all the activities in the house, what we do are there to help. <coughs> because the mind has something to work upon. You are living, but living for something, for something. And so here, this childlike mind jumping here and there, monkey-like mind jumping here and there needs to be kept at one place for some time. Right now I feel that in today's scenario, everybody is at one place and that is in the house. And in the house we are trying to stabilize ourselves, quieten ourselves, stay at one place for some time. That's a good training of human mind. Staying at one place, trying to do something at one place. But if it was, it is a dull mind, then you will worry about that also. You will not like it. You will hate situation. You will suffer. Dull mind is ready to suffer only. So let's come out of that suffering and let's see that here you have a very good opportunity to sit and train your mind. A yogic student doesn't have any problem if he is made to, you can. So, point is, second stage, shipta, and shipta mind needs training to come to another level, which is called as vikshipta state. Vikshipta. That is occasionally steady. Occasionally steady. When you have some interest in something, you have a desire. Desire is very strong. So then you are trying to work on yourself. Instead of desire, if you have a goal, very good. But this desire also makes you to work. I want to do better. This is fine, but I want to do a little better. Trained well, mind will always question, is it correct or not? But at least mind has started thinking. Mind has started doing something. So here, this type of a mind is definitely better mind that it is remaining steady for some time. But then why are we doing all these things? This mind is meant for what? To get more and more from the external world. Chitta, the world by itself, which is collecting. Collecting from the external world. Your eyes is showing you something, your ears is showing you something, your skin, all the sensory organs, they are showing you something. <clears throat> they are giving you knowledge of the world and you are receiving all the time. That is the job of Chitta, collecting more and more information and knowledge. If you want to train your Chitta well, then knowledge. So here you are trying to see that your mind is definitely staying at one place for a little longer. Earlier mind was just jumping from one thought to another thought. Now that you are staying at one place for a little longer. Here is a butterfly wants to suck the nectar. A little bit longer at one place. And, and you are taking the nectar. That type of a mind. Stay till that purpose is served, your desire is fulfilled. Person stays and then again restless. You must have heard absent minded professors where the professor is doing his job well, but rest of the time he is unsteady. He doesn't even know where he has to travel and what he has to do. A professor was traveling in a train and a uh -huh. Ticket collector asked for a ticket and he's searching, searching. The collector says, sir, I know you must be having a ticket. I don't doubt that. Don't worry. He says, no, no, I have to worry because I don't even know where I have to go. So by seeing the ticket only, I will know where I have to go. So let me. So the point is made is, mind is kept steady, but only for a certain purpose. Otherwise not. Even this type of a mind is not 
a correct type of find. All these three types which we have talked about, Moodha, Shipta, Vikshipta, these are not the mind actually yoga needs or a life needs or living needs. Really a mind which is required is the fourth type and that is Ekagra Chitta. Complete control, Ekagra Chitta. When you are steady for a long, long period, as long as you want to be. Focused mind, totally integrated mind, totally stable mind. When mind is stable, naturally health would be stable, everything would be fine. That stable mind is the mind which is required actually for a yoga training. Now anybody and everybody learns yoga, but the mind is not right with them. So learning, never satisfied with one thing, learning some asanas, want to learn more asanas, more pranayam, more types of meditation. But doing what? Whether your mind has become steadier, whether your mind is really focused, whether you have mastery over mind, that is what we have to check, no? Things, but remain with those things for long. That is better. That is much better training. And too many of the time, and then only remaining at that level, whether this is right or that right. I am not satisfied with this. Let me go ahead that way. And that would be beautiful. For that, decision has to be taken because chitta has all these components: mind, which is of course a connecting factor. It connects the mind, connects to all our sensory organs connect to all our pran and so on and so forth. But then the entire path of yoga is to go beyond these sensory organs. Training of yoga goes that way. Go beyond sensory organs. These sensory organs, your eyes, your ears, your all these sensory organs, if they are affecting you, then that mind is not right. They are feeding you with varieties of things. You should have that discrimination, what is worthless, what is worthwhile, to remove what is required, to keep what is there. That mind is required. People talk a lot about today's scenario. So many gossips are going on. And person is, more person is going to get affected by anything and everything. Somebody said this, somebody said that. Now the periods are going to be worst and situations would be so bad and you know, people go on and on. And getting affected, suffering, immunity will go low, but suffering will be more. So don't do that. Stop thinking or train your mind to see that it remains steady for some time with something. Mind has to be kept busy. Mind, if just left alone, it is not a trained mind, so it will go in a negative phase. So you pick up all wrong things from the world and bring you to a very poor state, very sad state. So don't do that. But come on, become aware about your own mind and try to see that you manage your mind. Mind is after all your instrument, your servant. Don't suffer because of your servant or your instrument. Rather, handle it nicely. That's how we should go about it. So that mind should remain steady at one place. No? So work on yourself. If you find your mind is getting dull, too much thinking, and too much thinking means negative thinking only. Restless mind is always goes negative. And then if at all thinking, because you have taken some work, thinking at for the work for some time, and then again, negative thinking. So such mind should be discouraged. Watch yourself. If you have this type of a mind, go ahead. Ekagra. One by one. Your timetable should be so much organized that you are, you know, after this what, what you are going to do, how you are going to spend your day. Everything is very clear in your mind. <clears throat> and use your mind properly. Ekagra. There is one more mind which is still more superior than Ekagra. 
that is Viruddha mind. Viruddha mind, most highest type of a mind. That mind is such a mind which when you need to use, you use it. Otherwise it is quiet. Blank run. You have to do something, think and do it. Think and do it. Otherwise quiet. Complete mastery over mind. Complete mind. You tell yourself to stop and you stop. You tell yourself, come on, sleep, you will sleep. Tell yourself, come on, here is the food. Develop hunger and eat food and you do that. It's very, very simple. You have decided to do and you do it. Your mind is totally cooperating with you when you want to do something. Otherwise, mind is quiet. Mind doesn't create problem for you. Mind doesn't bring negativity for, for you or any other thing for you. You don't need it. You are clear how to go ahead in today's life or life. And so this is how we have to slowly learn to observe our own self. Very often I find that uh, when human is little quiet, when all the thoughts are settled a bit, actually when you have slept so well and in the morning your mind is so peaceful, there is no pains or aches in your body, you are very fit and fine and mind is peaceful. That is such a blissful mind, beautiful mind. And that mind, if you want to think about something, will give you very good ideas or very good direction. Because yoga says that knowledge is there within us only. This external knowledge is just an information. Real knowledge. What you have to do is keep your chitta quiet. Chitta will be the rodha. So smoothly, rightly. And so happy or not, whether you have done it well or not, whether everything around you is right or not. Yeah, no. Everybody is different. Every situation is different. You don't have to worry about proving yourself right or wrong, right in front of people. <coughs> Just do your part. But what is really, really required is training your mind. <coughs> and so, work on yourself. Train what state your mind is right now. That state, don't use your mind. Just remember God and <coughs> So, we have to understand, become aware about ourselves, the state of mind we are in, and learn to uplift our mind from one level to another level. Right now, this struggle has to go on, till after years of practice together, you will realize that that becomes your second nature. You are becoming quieter. You are becoming a little more focused. You are becoming more stable, not getting affected by external. And you have a very intelligent mind because the intelligence is from within. And that mind will help you, not hurt you or harm you. So take charge. It's very interesting to watch your own self. Very interesting to work on yourself. So do that and enjoy the time which we are going through right now. Namaskar.